Hello friends, this video on sound part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this I think I can conclude this lesson and then we can start with some of the problems based on whatever we studied in the remaining half of the lesson. So let us look at problem 1. It says a submarine emits a sonar pulse which returns from an underwater cliff in 1.02 seconds. If the speed of the sound in salt water is 1531 meter per second, how far away is the cliff? Okay, so what is a cliff? A cliff is a kind of a hill, right? So in this case, let us suppose if you have a cliff and you have another submariner, right? So we have to find out the distance between the cliff and the submariner. This distance is to be found out. Now we know that the velocity of the sound is given as 1531 meter per second and it is also given that a submarine emits a sonar pulse which returns from the underground underwater cliff in 1.02 seconds. That means let us suppose if this submarine emits the pulse it goes and it comes back in 1.02 seconds. That means the total time to go and come back T capital T is the total time. So the total time is 1.02 seconds. Right? So let us try. So if this, now let us try to calculate the total distance traveled. So the total distance traveled will be equal to velocity into time taken. So this will be equal to 1531 into 1.02 which is equal to 1561.62. 1 so this will be the total distance traveled in this much time. So what is the total distance traveled from this much time? This plus this because it says that the sonar pulse is emitted from submarine. It goes to the cliff. It comes back from the cliff. So that means this D is nothing but the total distance. But we have to calculate the distance between the cliff and the submarine. So which will be half of this. Therefore, distance between cliff and submarine will be equal to d by 2 which is equal to 1561.62 divided by 2 which comes out to be 780.81 meters. So this is the distance between the cliff and the submarine. Let us look at the next problem. It says a stone is dropped from the top of a tower 500 meter high into a pond of water at the base of the tower. So let us suppose if this is the pond and this is the tower. So you drop a stone from here. Okay. When is the splash heard? So when will you hear the splash? So that means let us suppose if you drop the stone. First of all the stone has to reach this pond. So that th there will be some time which will be taken by the stone to reach the pond. After that the sound here the sound will be produced. Right. Now the sound has to travel. So this is the time taken. That means Time after which the splash is heard, that time will be equal to the time taken by the stone to reach the pond plus the time taken by sound to reach the listener. That means the time that stone will take to reach this pond from the top of the tower and the time that sound will take to reach from the pond to the top of the listener. So this is the time that stone will take and this is the time that sound will take. Right? So let us try to calculate both of them one by one. So let me call this time as T1. Let me call this time as T2. Right? So let us first calculate T1. So how do we calculate T1? We know the equ uh, Newton's equation, second equation which is S is equal to UT plus half gt square. So here this is plus because it is falling down. So in that case we have plus g. So what is s here? s is the distance traveled that is the height of the tower. So this will be h. Initial velocity when the stone was at the top is 0. So this will be 0 plus half g. t is t1 in this case. Therefore t1 square will be equal to 2h by g or we can say t1 is equal to root over 2h by g 
that is equal to root over 2 into h is 500 meters g is to be taken as 10 so this is cancelled so we get root over 100 that is equal to 10 seconds so that means the stone will take 10 seconds to reach the pond now let us calculate t2 that means the sound how much time as soon as the stone reaches the uh, pond that means after 10 seconds the sound will be produced right so now once the sound is produced it has to reach to the listener's ear so how much time sound will take to to go from this point to this point so in that case we have to calculate the distance so we can say that the time taken by sound will be equal to distance traveled by sound distance traveled by sound divided by speed of sound right so what is the distance that sound will travel height of the tower which is see that h and speed of the sound is given as 340 meters per second so this will be 500 divided by 340 which comes out to be 1.47 seconds right so therefore the total time after which the sound will be heard the splash sound will be heard therefore the time after which splash is heard will be equal to 10 plus 1.47 that is equal to 11. 4, 7 seconds. So after this much time, the splash is heard at the top. Now let us look at last problem of this lesson. It says a sound wave travels at a speed of 339 meter per second. Okay. So speed of the sound wave is given as 339 meter per second. If the wavelength is 1.5 centimeters, so wavelength is 1.5 centimeters, which is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters, what is the frequency of the wave? So we have to calculate the frequency. So what is the relationship between speed, frequency and wavelength? We know that frequency is equal to speed of the wave divided by wavelength so this will be 339 divided by 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 so this comes out to be 226 into 10 to the power 2 which is equal to 22600 hertz or this can also be written as 22.6 kilohertz so this would be the frequency of the sound wave will it be audible so what is the audible range for human beings? So when it is saying will it be audible, it is normally talking about the human audible range. So what is the audible range for human beings? The audible range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So does this frequency fall under this range? It is 22.6 kilohertz. So therefore, it is not audible because it does not fall in the hearing range. So it is not audible, right? So I hope that now you now you understand what is sound, how is sound produced, how does sound propagate in a medium, what are the different characteristics or different properties of sound which describes a sound wave like wavelength, frequency, time period, speed, right? Now you also know some of the applications of sound like ultrasound in medical purposes and in industries. You also understand about the basic structure and functioning of the human ear. Please try to solve little more problems so that you get more familiar with the concepts of the lesson. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.